Welcome to the gap. This is the gap. Yeah. They should have never gave you platform. out there on Kamal, and this is The Gab. We're on episode 31. Uh, for the tubers out there, like, share, comment, subscribe, and push that notification bell. And for my potters out there, look it, go on Google Podcasts, go on Apple Podcasts, and go on SoundCloud. Bow! Type in fucking The Gab or Kamal Johnson, and I pop up. Hey, we got our sponsors, First Place Losers, ah, rocking the gear. Link's gonna be below. Check the merch shop out. Buy some shit. You feel me? Buy it if you like it. But still, buy some shit. You feel me? Hold on. We gotta get it. Hey, buy that shit. You feel me? Bow, 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 bow. All right. We, we, we hopping right into it. Right into it. First topic. And this has been going around the news like a motherfucker. Uh, but I want to put, you know... Have my own thoughts on it, own spin on it. So, Simone Bowles bowed out at the Olympics because of her mental health. And I want to talk about black mental health in America and how motherfuckers usually deem it out here. But let's show, no, we're going to shout out Simone Bowles. We're going to shout out Naomi Osaka. And we're going to shout out Kyrie Irving for looking out for their fucking mental health and saying, fuck everybody else. I got to look out for my shit. While other motherfuckers was talking about, talk, oh, they're quitters. Oh, they need to do it for their team. They need to do this. Basically saying, fuck black mental health. But when it comes to, all right, put in perspective. Simone Bowles is fucking in the Olympics for our country and shit, right? And motherfuckers want to get on her case because she don't want to do some fucking flips because of her mental health. But let a nigga like Kyle Rittenhouse, this motherfucker shoot up a whole bunch of motherfuckers, and then this nigga's up. His mental health is all fucked up, and everybody's all, you know, oh my god, like we gotta look out for bro mental health, like he's going through shit. You know what? Shut the fuck up. Y'all motherfuckers out there, I cannot fucking stand you bitch ass niggas, man. Fuck. Man, that's how they really spending it though. It don't make no fucking sense. But, like I said, shout out to them. Y'all, as black people, fuck what anybody else talk about it. If you're not mentally prepared or mentally in the shit and it's affecting your mental, you can say fuck everybody, take a chill pill, sit the fuck out, get your mental right, do what you gotta do, do therapy, and do all that shit. Fuck what anybody else talking about. Oh, the grit through it. No, you fucking wouldn't, punk motherfucker. You fucking stub your toe, your whole mental all gone and shit. I bet you try to do some sport, nigga. You get, you get hit. Your arm, bear. Oh, 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 I can't do this. My head hurts. Oh, oh. Or some bullshit happen where you, you fuck around and like, you going through some shit. Probably your significant other or a little bit of financial trouble. You, oh, God. Oh, I can't do it. Oh, my God. My head. Uh, it doesn't make sense. Uh, I can't. My mental is, is out of here. Oh, my God. We always do that shit. Man. We'll always be hella, it's always deemed heroic for white motherfuckers to look out for their mental health. But when black people do it, we deemed as weak as fuck. Get it together. You're selfish. Fucking bullshit. All right. And like I said, we're going to talk about black mental health in America. Let me give y'all some motherfucking stats. Look, you know we make up 13% of the population. That's already given. But 16% of us report... Reported to have mental health with means is a number is much higher because you know as black people We don't fucking report the shit sometimes because we know how the stigma is you a weak nigga You weak as fuck, bruh You talk about your mental health. What kind of weak shit is that? You know how the fucking story be going and shit So personally say 16% but I think the number higher, bruh. I think it's anywhere from 25 to 30% uh of black people dealing with mental health issues and things in that nature. You feel me? And like I said, you know, they're already, man, they're already deem, they be deeming us as weak when we talk about our mental health and things like that. Don't listen to them. Fuck off. Fuck you. 
That's how I feel. Fuck you if you feel that way. And look it. Our teens, man. Our fucking team. Like, it's affected. It, mental health affect them a lot, bro. Like, bruh. Our t- teens are committing suicide at a higher rate. Than the white counterparts. Oh, bruh. 2019 suicide was the second leading cause of motherfucking death between the ages of 15 and 24 of African Americans in 2019. Second leading, my nigga. Second leading. Bro, this shit is serious, bro. We got, yes, this shit is mad serious. Fuck, bro. I can't believe they, like, it just, it just baffles me, these motherfucking media outlets and these personalities and Mainly white males. Let's keep it buck. Let's keep it a fucking buck. These white males out here don't play a lick of sports, ain't athletic at all, ain't never done no training, ain't been in the public eye to do any type of physical activity. But these the main motherfuckers talking about, oh, you're just selfish. Your mental health? What? Grit through it. Get us a fucking medal. That was their whole sentiment to Simone Bowles. Shut the fuck up and get us a medal. You could do 50% of the work and still get us a medal. What? No, nigga, she's doing some outstanding shit. And if her mental not there and she can't really land shit like she's supposed to, she could really fuck herself up. Man, shit, just, this shit be pissing me off, bro. How these motherfuckers be, bro. Man, fuck these niggas. And we need to look at mental health needs to be talked about more within the black community. And when we in our black spaces and, and talking a much amongst each other, we need to take it more, way more serious. We are though. We are taking it more serious lately though. But we need to have it even more serious. More people need to come out if they really dealing with some mental shit. And like we need to create a safe space for people to talk about this shit. Cause I know I've been in I've been in circles where motherfuckers be not really fucking with like somebody say they got something going on with the mental. They looking at it like, oh, you a weak motherfucker. And that's not right, though. You feel me? In our teens, this is a second leading cause of death between the age of 15 and 24, bro. So if you out there, yo, and you listening to this, and you going through some mental problems, fuck everybody. Get your shit, get yourself together. You can say fuck everybody. Get your mental together. All right? I'm all for it. Do what you got to do. If you want to fucking lay in bed all day, fuck it. Do it. You want to eat fucking cheese sandwiches all goddamn day? Fucking do it. You want to fucking just eat ice cream all day and watch Dawson Creek? I say fucking do it. Or one-on-one, whatever. I don't give a fuck. Get your mental right. That's all I be doing. If I'm not mentally in the game or mentally into something, I say fuck everybody. I don't want to do this shit. That's how I come social media sometimes. I'm like, bro, I'm not, I have to use social media for what I do. But sometimes I'll be like, this shit giving me a headache. This shit is putting me in a certain mental space. I'm getting the fuck off social media. People could suck my motherfucking dick if they don't like me. And that's just how I feel about the shit. You feel me? Man. These motherfuckers, man. The white. Oh, God. Oh, man, bro. The fucking school shooter. A white 18-year-old. Oh, my God. His mental was motherfucking off. We have to be fucking condescending to that. We have to be considerate. Oh my god. Killed a thousand people, but he was mentally going through some shit. Oh, duh. Simone Bowles. Fuck that. She better go do them motherfucking triple axle flips to get us a goddamn gold medal. Who the fuck she thinks she is? Gosh darn it. <laughs> fuck those white people that saying that bullshit. And some black motherfuckers saying bullshit too. Yeah, yeah, it ain't only just white people. It's black motherfuckers out there saying bullshit too. Y'all stop that shit. If you black, look out for your mental health first. All right, on to the next topic. Bro, a lot of people are about to be in a fucking turmoil, about to be a shit show. It's about to be just fucked up everywhere. You know why? Because the moratorium is fucking ending. And Joe Biden couldn't re-sign it. You know why? Because the U.S. Supreme Court had a vote and be like, nope, we're ending in August. And it was five to four. So shit's in. Bow. So what's happening? What's going to. I don't know if it's going to happen. But what I think might happen. And from my sources that I got. LA Times and Forbes. Bruh. 
A lot of motherfuckers about to be getting kicked out, and then they got to go into a fucking market right now where the prices are high and the vacancies are low. That means that there are really no places to live, and the places there are to live is fucking high as fuck. So this is about to cause some damn turmoil. You know what else is going to cause turmoil? Is that people are waiting for government assistance because you know how it takes a long fucking time for that shit to process. And while it's processing, the people that own the motherfucking buildings might be fucking slumlords and might be like, you know what? I want you out. You have rights though. Like you could stay in a spot for like 30 days and be like, yo, you get 30 days to kind of get shit together. But that still ain't a lot of time, especially, you know, we in the vid era. We are in the vid era. What? Really? I know about to be a bunch of, this week about to be telling. This week is about to be telling of like what's about to really be fucking going on. Feel like it's gonna be so many motherfuckers getting kicked out into the street because of slumlords, and they not helping people get the the government assistance, or be like, you know what? I know the government assistance, right? The process takes a while. So, hey man, bite you gotta bite the bullet. But at the same time, it's hard to tell somebody that's the owner of a building and they haven't been getting fucking paid for dumbass on. They haven't been getting rent and stuff like that. Unless they got the government assistance. Then they did get fucking paid. But yeah, man. This is just like... I don't understand why they didn't extend this. Like, just extend it. You see the... There, there's the, the... The Delta. I'm just calling it the Delta. The Delta is out there. And it's creeping. You feel me? And the numbers are going up. People catching the Delta. And I ain't talking about a motherfucking flight. Alright? Like, bro. Extend... The moratorium. This shit's gonna this is gonna be a fucking shit show in a lot of places, especially a lot of fucking underprivileged communities and stuff. It is about to be fucking many. I am fucking telling you. Oh my goodness. Yeah, but this is ending. The Biden administration, they didn't want to end this, but but they had no choice. US Supreme Court rules over everything. See? So you got to read, you got to learn. You think the president be having a lot of power? Nah, this nigga something. This nigga don't be having a lot of power, yo. He could get fucking overwrought, overwritten by a lot of things, yo. And this is one of them, US Supreme Court. So, with that being said, like I uh, I hoped people out there like stack their ducats, stack the paper that they got from other government assistance if they could. And if they fucking couldn't I'm like, bro, I hope I hope people ain't going to be slumlords out there. But you know how motherfuckers is. It's going to be fucking slumlords. And a lot of people are going to be out on the fucking streets. And thrown into a fucking market where it's going to be fucking turmoil unless you got fucking money. Man. Fuck this shit. <laughs> anyway, man, I'm about to get... All right, we about to lighten the mood a little bit. A little bit because the shit I'm about to talk about is scary movies, so <laughs> but you already know what we about to get into. Oh shit, we about to get into the sad segment. Let's get it, nigga. The fuck? Let's go. And we talk about the Fear Street trilogy. Hey, these were fucking books. I haven't read the books, but these were books and they turned them into movies. Brilliant. Brilliant. You know why? Because this shit was actually pretty good. It all aligned. I was like, oh, this is fucking neato. But, alright, only thing, I'll say that later. Let's get the stats first. You know how we do. IMDb gave it 6.2. Rotten Tomatoes gave it 82%. Okay, Rotten Tomatoes. Give y'all a little hand clap. This shit. This shit. Yeah, but still fuck them though. <laughs> fuck them motherfuckers. This came out in 2021. So, it's uh it was a three-part movie. First one was 1994, then it went back to 1978, then it went back to 1666. The 1666, all right, that title kind of corny. I mean, I get it, you know, the whole little devil shit, 666, blah blah blah. I understand it, but I still I saw the title like that shit corny. But this movie these three movies together were fucking incredible. You know what I mean? This was directed 
And it was written by Leah Janak. I hope I said that right. And it was also written by two other people, Phil Grasadilla and Zach Oluwis. I know I fucking butchered the names, but y'all get the gist. <laughs> and then it had a bunch of actors in here, but two of the ones that stand out for me is because I'm sorry, guys. I never remember white actors, really. Unless you like Ben Affleck, Matt Damon, fucking Keanu Reeves, motherfuckers like that. Other than that, I'll be forgetting these white actors. I need to get better with that, you know? But I'll be forgetting. But, man, my black brothers, you feel me? Daryl Britt Gibson, motherfucker funny as hell, you feel me? And, bro, Benjamin Flores Jr., he has been putting in work. He's been in a lot of movies. Kudos to motherfucking y'all. Let me get y'all, y'all motherfucking hands clap. Gotta get an arrow hand, you feel me? Get a gunshots. Let's get it. I fucks with it. Yeah, man. So this was a three-part movie, and basically the gist of the movie was this uh one side was called uh what the fuck were they called? The rich motherfuckers. I forget their name. Cause I don't remember, never remember the rich motherfuckers' name. You feel me? But Shady Side was the poor people. And their town was cursed. Oh, it was cursed. But you know who was the main corporate to curse it? Yep, somebody from the rich side of town. You feel me? Basically, what happened was, so they went in, they went backwards, basically. They started the movie in 1994, and they had it where, you know, uh, every year, people, the somebody from Shady Side became like a serial killer and killed a bunch of motherfuckers. So this started off in the mall. They're in the mall, and this kid turned into one of the serial killers, started murdering. And then they found out that basically, like, oh, the town is cursed because this one chick back in the day, she, like, fuck around and got dismembered. She got her fucking hand chopped off, and her hand is buried in one spot, and her body's buried in another spot. But she cursed, she cursed the fucking, uh, the town. Actually, no, she cursed the guy. She cursed one guy. And that guy ended up selling his fucking soul to the motherfucking devil. But he lied and said this chick sold her soul to the devil. And this is where you figure it out in the 1666. The 1978 was just more of like, that part was just a tie-in together the uh, the other two movies, the 94 and the 66 movie. So, basically the 94 was the mall shit and they figure it out. And then they end up bumping into a lady that when she went to camp in 78 she was from shady side and everybody got murked so there were a couple people went in the dude that was helping her out which became a cop in 94 was actually ancestors of the motherfucker that sold his soul to the devil and blamed actually her ancestor fucking crazy right yeah i know wow you know what i mean so, the uh, the uh, 1666 Part 3, basically, they went back in the day and the... Essentially, bro, this motherfucker was jealous because she was a lesbian. She That was the gist of the fucking... That was the whole point. This chick, like this other chick, was a lesbian. He actually liked her, but he she wasn't fucking with him. And then she saw her fucking with the other chick and he was like, Nah, fuck that. You a devil worshiper. You feel me? And he was like, fuck this. I'm going to sell my soul to the devil. But then I'm going to lie and say it's these motherfuckers. And everybody thought they was witches and everything. And then they got into a tussle. And then her fucking hand got cut off and bow, put in one area. And then like, you know, he fucking, uh, they fucking hung her ass. And her body was over there. And it was a curse. And everybody thought Shady Side was cursed because she was from that region. And no, other bruh was the one and lied about it. And they figured it out in 94. But before they figured it out, a thousand niggas got killed. <laughs> God damn. They were killing everybody, every which way. Didn't matter. One girl got slid through a goddamn meat grinder. Another motherfucker got Hit out the park with a baseball bat. Another dude was the Axe Man. He just has a sling. 
slit a nigga motherfucking head right off. I'd seen a motherfucker get killed with a goddamn firecracker. Put a thousand firecrackers up their ass and blew them to fucking smithereens. <laughs> no, they didn't do that, but I'm surprised they didn't. Um, but yeah. At, so once you uh part three, they jumped back into the part one movie and they figured it out, got everything together. Ended up killing bruh because bruh became a cop at the end. How fucking ironic. Of course, the motherfucker that's a cop is fucking crooked and is the one doing the cursing of everything. And it led back to his motherfucking bloodline, his ancestors. Ain't that about a bitch. But the thing about it, him doing, like, selling the soul to the devil, his, his area and region flourished. Had all the resources, had the big houses, all the money, everything you can ask for, all of it. All he had to do was every every once in a while go down there, do his little prayer, and then a fucking name appeared. There's always somebody from Shady Side, and he'd be like, "All right, boom, make sure this motherfucker kills this amount of people." And I keep motherfucking blessing you with you and your community with everything you want. Then the kids found out. Oh, these motherfuckers, like, for the most part, they were mainly teenagers in this movie. Except for in 94, that's when some of the teenagers became adults from 78. So, yeah. They ended up murking, bruh. Bow! Murk, bruh. Curse is fucking over. It is over. Shady side star flourishing. The other rich side, I can't remember their name. They start, <laughs> motherfuckers start going to jail, losing houses, all types of shit. Because some of them knew they was covering up. You know how they do, cover the shit up. You know what I mean? But that was the gist of all three movies. It basically, I like how they did it because they didn't turn it into a show. It was basically like a six hour horror movie, but they just broke it up in three parts. Fucking genius. I fuck with it. I love me some horror movies. Man. I wish more... I wish more black... Just black people in general was in more horror movies. From the directing, to the acting, to the producing, to the writing. I just, yeah. That's a genre that black people don't really tap into. I see... Uh, uh, I see Jordan Peele. He doing his thing. I see him. I see you, bruh. But, you know, I wish more... More is involved when it comes to horror movies. But y'all go check this out. This shit on Netflix. You feel me? This is such a this is a great trilogy. I love how they put everything together. And only gripe I had was the, you know, the 1666. It's kind of corny, but I get it. I get why they did it. I fuck with it, man. I fuck with I fuck with everything about the the, uh, the horror movies. Y'all go check it out. You feel me? Check that shit out. It's on Netflix. Boop, boop, boop. Alright. Next thing we about to get into, and you know I fucking love my goddamn memes, and you know it is motherfucking meme, meme time. time. Ooh, love my memes. I think y'all love them too. All right, man. Uh, snaps, bro. All right, bro. So for my potters, bro. So above, it has the police raiding a house. Below, it has a man. Look like he had a Boston game, and he's like upset. He's looking like. I could have made that three, damn it. What the fuck? And then, it reads below where the raid is happening. It said, uh, soladospirit.com. I guess got it from the website. I don't know. Whatever. Uh, undercover cops posing as drug buyers are arrested by undercover cops posing as drug dealers. Oh my god! Oh my god! <laughs> oh my goodness! <laughs> Come on, bro. And then below, with the man with his, with the angry face, with his his uh, hands on his hips, like, God damn it, it's, it says across, taxpayers. Of course! This is how he fucking feels, like, y'all motherfuckers posing as other posing and arresting each other? We wasting our tax dollars, what the fuck is y'all doing? <laughs> oh my god. Jeez. Jeez Louise. Man. That's just, that's really how I be, though. I wonder where this is at, though. They didn't say. All right. For my potters, right? 
So he got my black brother. He listening to his dog, a real dog, an actual dog. And the dog is in his ear, whispering. And it says above. It says, dog, she had a dude over here. He just left. <laughs> bro. Come on, bro. Dog, hey, dog's man, best friend. Dog's man, best friend. Oh, my God, bro. Bro. Hey, man, dog. Burp, 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 burp. <laughs> I wish I understand dog. I bet you dog. Bro, it's a bunch of people over here with fucking dogs. Oh my god. Some of them are great great owners. Some of them are fucking shitty owners. Good lord. I I'm already bro, these dogs over here, I'm already knowing they be they be barking. Burr, burr, burr. I know they be like, let me the fuck out this hot ass house and I wanna go get the fucking. Cause I'm in heat. <laughs> I think that's what the dogs are saying, but I'm not sure. All right, man. So y'all know the NFL players, they got to get vaccinated. They got to show that they're vaccinated to play and all that shit. So you know all the red tape regulation and shit. So for my potters, you remember the movie? You feel me? Uh, What the fuck is that movie, bro? With Mac Lovin', man. Damn. I be forgetting some of these movies. Uh, Y'all know the movie down below. Let me know. And it has Mac Lovin', you know, the scene where he's showing his ID, his fake ID. Like he's from fucking Hawaii and shit. And he shoots me like. <laughs> and above it says, NFL players showing their vaccination cards. Mm. They're like, yep, this is it. I got vaccinated. Knowing damn well they didn't get vaccinated. <laughs> nah, more, pe more people gonna get vaccinated. They're really putting the pressure on motherfuckers to get vaccinated. Oh my God. McLevin. <laughs> It's like super something. Super. Fuck. I can't think of the movie. I'm going to think of it once this shit is over. I guarantee the shit. Oh my God. I know that's. Uh, I know that's how NFL players are NFL players going to be showing their shit. Ooh. Wee. All right. Y'all give yourself a hand out there. I appreciate y'all for watching, for listening. Hey. This is The Gap, episode 31. I'm Kamal. Hey, we'd like to thank our sponsors. First Place Losers. Bow. Link gonna be below. Y'all go cop some merch. Cop some merch for your boy. Feel me? I got more designs coming out. I got more products and styles on the fucking site. Y'all gonna love it. I know y'all is. Ooh. 31. We up there. We getting up there. Uh. Hey, for my tubers, like, share, comment, subscribe, and push that notification bell. And for my potters, type in The Gab or Kamal Johnson on SoundCloud. Apple Podcasts or Google Podcasts. Bam! And I pop right the fuck up. I appreciate y'all out there. Mm. On that note, I'm about to I'm about to be out here be out of here, you feel me? I'm about to go talk to one of these dogs and really tell me what they really thinking. Cause I think they being held against their will. <laughs> I'm out. Oh burp, 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 burp. Get me the fuck out of here. That's what that's what. This was good. This was scary.